kids, can you believe it's already November? And you know what that means. It's almost yes. Christmas! Hold on, we can't keep doing this. We can't skip over Thanksgiving. There's still so much to be thankful for. Yeah, you're right. So what do you think we should do? I'm so glad you asked. It's game time. Today, we're going to be playing a classic game called Chubby Bunny. But for this game, we will take turns putting a marshmallow in our mouth and saying, Happy Thanksgiving! You guys can decide who you can still understand at the end. Let's get started. All right. Go for it, Caitlin. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can say it. Oh, it's a big one. How is that spelling? I probably want. Mm. How is that spelling? <laughs> All right. Okay. How is that spelling? Is that how it's taking out like this? Mm -hmm. huh? How is that spelling? That's it, folks. This is our official Chubby Bunny champion. <laughs> well, we all learned a lot today. Never skip over Thanksgiving, and too many marshmallows can actually be kind of gross. Yeah. Well, I hope you had fun. <laughs> well, I hope you had fun playing this game. <laughs> well, I hope you had fun playing this game with us today. Yeah, let's stand up and worship! Hey friends, I'm so excited to get to sing and dance with you today. Let's jump into a super fun song.
are so thankful that we get to sing and dance for you, to praise you, God, because you are so worthy of all of the praise that we could ever bring you. God, would you teach us something new today, and will we carry that out into our weeks? We love you so, so, so much, and it's in your name that everybody said, amen. families, it's Sarah and I'm back for this week's edition of Questions from Kids. This week's question comes from Gavin who is seven years old and he asked, can God really see everything? How is he in more than one place at one time? Yes, Gavin, God sees everything, every minute of every day. This can be really hard to wrap our brain around, but track with me here. There are three words that start with omni, which means all. That helps us understand that God is omnipresent, which means God is everywhere all at once. The reason for this is because God is a spirit. He's not limited to a physical body. You and I have bodies, so we can only be at one place at one time. But because God is a spirit and is always present, he can be everywhere all the time. God is so big that he can't be limited to just one space or one place at a time. He's everywhere at once. He is fully with you right now. He is fully with me right now. Because of that, he is omnipresent or all present. He's also omniscient, which means all knowing. God knows everything and is aware of everything. Last but not least, God is also omnipotent, meaning all powerful. These three attributes of God really help us understand how big and powerful God truly is. He's always in control and always by your side. In times where we really need God, he's there to help us through whatever we're facing. God is always there to help us in times of good or bad. And we learn in Proverbs 15, three, that God's eyes are everywhere watching over all people. Remember that God is always present. No matter where you are, where you go, it is not only a great comfort, but also a great protection. Well, that's all we have this week, but don't forget to submit your guys' questions so I can answer them next week. See you then. The last four kings of Judah came from King Josiah's family. His three sons, Jehoiahaz, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah, and his grandson, Jehoiakim. Each ruled as the king of Judah for a short time. Jehoaz was not king for long. He did what was evil. And the king of Egypt came and made Jehoahaz a prisoner. The king stole silver and gold from Jehoahaz. Then he put Jehoahaz's brother Jehoiakim on the throne. When Jehoiakim was king of Judah, he too did what was evil. <laughs> the king of Babylon attacked Jehoiakim, made him a prisoner, and took him to Babylon. The king of Babylon stole some of the things from the Lord's temple and put them in his own temple. Yeah. When Jehoiakim was taken away, his son Jehoiakim became king of Judah. <laughs> Jehoiakim was king of Judah for just three months. He too did what was evil. The king of Babylon sent for Jehoiakim and brought him to Babylon. The king of Babylon made Jehoiakim's uncle Zedekiah king of Judah. Like his brothers, Zedekiah did what was evil. He led the people of Judah to do evil things too. The prophet Jeremiah warned Zedekiah that God would punish him, but Zedekiah did not listen. No. God was angry with the people of Judah. They sinned and did not obey God, but God loved his people. He wanted them to turn back to him. God sent prophets to warn the people, but the people did not listen. Hmm. Finally, it was time to punish the people of Judah for their sin. God allowed the king of Babylon and his army to attack Judah. Oops. Many of the people died. The king of Babylon took everything out of the Lord's temple and carried it back to Babylon. Then the king and his army burned the temple. They tore down the wall around the city and burned the palaces. Anything they did not take with them was destroyed. 
All of the people who were still alive were taken back to Babylon. The king forced them to be slaves. Everything the prophet Jeremiah had warned about happened, just like God said it would. God was right to punish his people for their sin, but he kept his promise to provide a king through David's family. Ultimately, God punished our sin through his son Jesus and made him our king forever. Wow, a lot just happened. There were so many different kings over Judah, and they were all bad. And then the people of Judah also started doing bad things and disobeying God. So, of course, God being the loving God that he is, he sent a prophet to Judah to warn them, to tell them to stop sinning and turn back to God. But they didn't listen. And guess what happened? They were punished. And punished is just another word for disciplined. How many of you have ever gotten in trouble or disciplined for doing something that you knew was wrong? I definitely have. Let me tell you a quick story about when I was little. I was about nine years old and my mom was baking for a party. It smelled so good. And when she finished, I asked, can I have some please? And she said, absolutely not. She told me not to touch them because I would get sick. So when she went to her room, I went back to the kitchen. I just wanted a little taste. So I took a bite out of one of the treats and I ran out of the kitchen. A few minutes later, I started to play with my toys and I started to feel really sick. I was having an allergic reaction. It had bananas in it, and I am really allergic to bananas. That was a really bad day for me. And then to top it off, I still got in trouble. My mom didn't tell me I couldn't have it because she was being mean. No, she told me no because she loved me and she knew what was best for me. And I didn't listen. So I got sick and I was disciplined. And that's what happened to the people of Judah. Because they didn't listen to God, they got in trouble and were punished for it. God was right to punish his people for their sin because they were doing really bad things and they were disobeying God. But their story wasn't over and neither is yours. Do you remember our big picture question? It says, how did God plan to fix what sin broke? And the answer is, God sent his son, Jesus, to take our punishment. And only through Jesus are our sins forgiven. So if you ever need help, you can pray this prayer. Let's pray it together. Lord, you tell us in your word that our sin separates us from you. Thank you for sending Jesus and for forgiving us for our sins. Give us power through your spirit to obey you. We are thankful for your love for us. Amen. When you pray that prayer, remember that God loves you no matter what, no matter what mistakes you make. And even though you may get in trouble for some of the bad things that you do, remember there is always forgiveness through Jesus. All you have to do is pray and ask God for forgiveness and then turn back to God by turning away from sin. I love you all so much, but God loves you even more. Enjoy your small group time with your family or friends, and we'll see you next week. Bye.